Yeah, we use Rails. Alright, did you want a little intro? If you want to, I don't... I don't mind. I don't mind either. Okay. to start early. So, um, if you arrived early, uh, get prepared for um, uh, some tunes. Um, take it away, Martin. I'll just play a bit until then. Um, I'll try to play until the official time to start. <laughs> Some songs because uh, a few because I thought I could tr uh, I could try to show you some things on the screen <coughs> pictures of things but I felt but it feels weird to show pictures of things I think because the pictures of things aren't the things and so and so it's a bit fake and I feel it's fake so. Uh, and so, uh, but I could maybe I could try to talk about pictures, but I don't know about pictures, so I don't feel like I can talk about them. If you're feeling bad and your thoughts are sad, pass them on to someone else. <laughs> Western song.
most I like country and western songs because a lot of bad things happen in them, <laughs> and uh, a lot of violence, and, and uh, I feel like it's more true to life than other kinds of songs. Uh, Questions. If anyone's got any questions, because uh, because it's difficult to talk, and it's much easier to answer questions than it is to talk. But, um, what is the point? I, of it? I, <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> Itself and uh, and um, so and it never. I think that talking never matches up to anything else, you know. But I like uh, I like trying to talk. I like talking. But um, I, uh, but I don't understand it. I feel like it's a weird thing. But um, I don't. But then I, I don't really understand anything. I do think that when I was at art school, I remember um, always being asked to talk, you know, about my work, and, or feeling I had to talk about my work. In, when I was in the, when I was in first year, I remember um, people asking me questions about <laughs> people asking me questions about my work and why did I do that and why did I do that and why did I do that, and uh, and and I always. And I think I spent a lot of time after that uh, trying to um, answer those questions, you know. Uh, also, because my mum and dad, when I went home from uh, during the holidays from art school, uh, were always asking me what I was doing and why I was doing it, <laughs> you know. And they're cross-examining me, and. Uh, 
So I think that, um, and uh, and uh, and I think so. I, I, like looking back on it, I feel like I started uh, making work because, or I, I changed my work to make it so that I could defend it using words or talk or to, or talk about it, you know. And I don't know, I don't think that, like, I think, I, I, and I, I, I think I did, I think, I think I did that, but um, I don't know if that's a good thing, you know. In fact, I'd say it's probably not really a good thing, but, uh, anyway, I think that's what I did. Um, I think that because if someone said, "Oh, why did you do that painting?" You know, I, I, I did painting. I went to art. I went to art school, like with you know, um, I went to the Slade, which was quite traditional. I went straight from school in Scotland, so it was all kind of like still still lines and portrait, portraits and uh, and I I don't think I knew why you know why. So if someone said, "Oh, why did you do that?" I wouldn't, wouldn't really know, or I did it because I liked it, you know. Like I did paintings, I used colours, I think, because I, I liked them, you know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, but I think I didn't really like that. I didn't really know what, what, why, you know, why I would. I don't remember any answers before that. No. So I don't know if I did. Oh, um. But I do, I, I feel like I, I tried to break all work down. I tried to break it all down into, um, to make it sort of logical or something like that. So that I could, so that I could understand it, you know. And I suppose to be able to, to talk to other people about it. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's not true that I was trying to make it so that I could understand, that, so that I could explain it to people. But I think it might be partly true. Um, Oh yeah, there's, oh yeah, which piano? There's two pianos. I remember downstairs, I remember seeing some security device going up and down. Oh yeah. Going up, the, I, the, I, so there's a piano and there's a guy, usually a guy, sitting at it. Did you, did you ask him to do that? Did I ask him to do that? Yeah. I asked him to do that. <laughs> that is my work. <laughs> 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 No, 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 that, no, that is, that is supposed to be like that. <laughs> the idea of that is just to have something going on, um, to, uh, to have like a musical um, background music, that's the way to think of that uh, in the show. You know, so the, the instructions are to it's played by the security guards, but just because that's how we could work it out. Like, to, cause to employ people just to do that, it's too expensive, so... <laughs> There's a lot of decisions like that in that show. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of decisions are based on... Because I made a list of everything that I wanted to be in the Hayward show, and... Um, for, in the first meetings we had about it, in the, and a lot of those things couldn't be in it <laughs> because they were too expensive. Like I wanted to have people running through the show, and then that's too diff it's too difficult to do that. Um, 
because uh, it's this, I don't know, like, I made this sculpture where people run through the gallery as fast as they can. Every, when I did it, I did it once and uh, it was every 30 seconds someone ran through the gallery. And, uh, it was based on the fact it took about 15 seconds to, to sprint through the long gallery. So, it was a, so someone sprinted through and then there was a rest for 15 seconds and then another person sprinted through. And it was really important to me in that that uh, it was really fast, you know, that they sprinted as fast as they possibly could. And, um, which makes it a very difficult job. And uh, it, needed, it needs like teams of people and uh, it's too expensive to do it at the Hayward Gallery. So I wanted to have some kind of live action thing. And the guy, the person playing the piano was the, was the only thing we could really afford. Um, I, so that show is supposed to be a retrospective but in, of, of, and it's supposed to be like, kind of like the, it's like supposed to be like the top things, the favourite things that I think that I've done, but in fact, it's all the things that we could afford to do. <laughs> and, uh, but that's life, isn't it? Aye, that's the usual, yeah, that is the usual. Yeah, 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 every, yeah everything's like that. But, um, but still, but still, you know, um, I, well, I find that a difficult thing. Funding? Yeah, or the money for it. Um, uh, well, uh, well it's, f it's from selling work. Okay. <laughs> uh, and let, you know, unless, um, sometimes, like in the case of the Hayward Gallery, you know, they did pay for, so for example, they paid for the brick wall work to be made and you know they pay for certain things so but then those things are for the exhibition I wouldn't you know like the brick that's a the brick wall I would that's not something I'll have after the exhibition I mean that would have, have to be made again you know so um, and then for like for um, for production costs in uh, the, the galleries that I work with, two main galleries, and they they pay f for they usually front the money for production. Like so, they would pay in advance, but then that comes out of sales of work. So, like so, for example, if a huge amount of money gets spent on production, then I can end up owing the gallery lots of money, you know. That, that scares me a lot. I try to, I don't uh, I don't want to spend a lot of money. Well, I think also if you're making work which are installation based or in involving people in performance, then you can't really sell something like that. So that must be difficult because then you're making it properly. I well you can sell some of those works but <clears throat> And um, like the, the the piece, the the work, the sculpture of people running that that that's been sold. So people do buy those works, but not as I mean, they're not. They would be considered quite difficult to sell. Why? How? Um. I suppose they they know that they own it. <laughs> you know, I don't have got documentation to prove that they own it. 
Trust the boy, wow. <laughs> but you know, it's the same, uh, it's the same with a painting, really. <coughs> And lots of people can look at a painting without owning it, you know. It's not that. I don't think it's so, so uh, different. Well, now, I think now I try not to make work that I can, I, I want to make work that uh, I feel like um, um, yeah, I just, I, no, I don't, yeah, I don't think I do try and make things that I can defend using words anymore. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think I think that was I think yeah it's, it came from art school, but I think I must have wanted to do that as well, you know. That, and uh, I think it comes from fear, you know. I think I am very scared, you know, and I want and I, I hate and I want to control things, you know. And I want to understand what I've done, you know. <clears throat> and I think that. Um, uh, uh, Right, so, so, but um, I, fi I have found in my life so far that um, I think, I feel like the best things I've done are things that were a little out of control, you know. But, um, what, what are they then and why do you think they're the best? Um, well, I just feel as if they are the best. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I feel like they're the best because they have like, like a sort of life in them, you know, or something like that. But, uh, um, so what were you thinking when you decided to fill a room with balloons? I was thinking that uh, I wanted to try I, I wanted to try and make a sculpture and I uh, Was it an original idea? What? <laughs> was it an original idea? Was what original idea? Uh, well uh, I didn't think I was copying anything. But I don't know if it is exactly an idea. I don't. But uh, it came. I, 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 I was trying to. I was trying to make a sculpture, and I was thinking, I don't know what to. I don't know what I could make. I was trying to. Um, I couldn't decide what material to use, and I was. So I was trying to think what. Could I do and how could I do it? And I and um, I got to th <coughs> and um, one of the one of the one of the problems I that I thought I, I was thinking about was um, that uh, even when I made the balloons, I, I, I'd made some other work at that point that I, that I was quite happy with. But then once I'd made this, these things, I didn't know where to where to put them exactly, you know, like on the wall and on the wall high up, low down, on the left or on the right, you know, I didn't know what to do. And um, and I was thinking, oh, but that's, but I was thinking it's really important where you put, like where, where, you, where something is, is affects it a lot, you know. I, th I feel like you can't look at a painting without seeing the wall that it, that's next to it, you know. And uh, or the room that it's in, you know, it's just like with music. It's exactly like with music. You know, the 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 reverb of, of the room, you know, makes the music sound different. So I, I was thinking, I was thinking about that. So I was thinking, you can't separate work from its environment. So, um, I, I, so then I think I thought about trying to make a work that kind of filled the 
uh, whole environment. Like, so doing, doing the balloons like, meant that I didn't decide where the work went in the room because it just fills the room, you know, it just takes on the shape of the room. And uh, also it solves the problem of trying to decide what shape to make something because it takes the shape of the room and also the, you know, takes the shape of the people. Uh, so it came, so the balloons thing was like a kind of like a little, ex most, a lot of things I do like that, it's like a little experimental process of trying to try out a wee, little, a wee idea, you know, if it is an idea, um, or tra just tra kind of experiment. And, um, but when I did the balloons, the first thing I thought of doing was trying to make one massive balloon that, uh, you know, that, f that would fill the whole space, uh, a, a big sphere. And <clears throat> but when I got into uh, sort of looking into that, it, it, well, it, f it proved to be very expensive. To, because to make a massive balloon like that, you know, you have to get it specially made. Also, it would mean that if wherever it was exhibited, it would have to be a different balloon, you know. So then I thought of using smaller balloons and uh, break, breaking it down into small, and, I, and uh, I found, you know, just kind of off-the-shelf regular party balloons. And uh, and it was, but it was done that, but the balloons, I first did it for an exhibition. So, uh, in, I was invited to do an exhibition, so I was basically desperately thinking of what I could possibly do. Uh, and uh, that, that I would be happy with. Which is which is quite the usual uh, uh, situation. Favourite artists? Yeah. Um, uh, I like Picasso and uh, Frank Stella. I liked him a lot when I was at art school. I like all of his work, not just the, not the early black paintings, but also the crazy works. That he, and um, Jeff Coons I like a lot, and Andy Warhol. And, um, Do you like your own work? Uh, sometimes. I but. <laughs> I sometimes I like it, I. Um, and uh, but quite often I feel disgusted by it. <laughs> yeah. Are you happy with how the show is curated? Um. Yeah. Well, I was heavily involved with curating it. And yeah, I'm I'm quite happy. I it, when when I was first asked, to, uh, yeah, I went through quite a big. I went through um, like really hating the Hayward Gallery. First, like first, you know, I went for, when they asked me to do it. I thought, yeah, brilliant. You know, like there was no doubt that I wanted to do it. But then. We went. Through, I went through quite a bad patch, because <laughs> um, I often have arguments with curators, and I had quite a lot of arguments with Cliff, the curator, 
But um, but at the end of it, <laughs> I uh, respected it much more than when we started. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. It sounds like the kind of thing people say, but I am saying that. But I'm not just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, because I've worked with other big museum type places in the Hayward, you know, I'm quite impressed, like they really go, they, they kind of go, they go, you know, they sort of go for it and try and, you know, so yeah, so I suppose I am, why do you think that it's, Mm. Yeah. But do you think that's a problem? Well, maybe some of those works I thought maybe originally they had their own room and they were installed. Aye. So I don't know if you thought the same. Um, well, uh, originally, I, I, Originally, like you say, those works were shown on their own, but there's no, but in a sh in a sh exhibition that's good. Well, I wanted to have loads of work in the exhibition, you know. So, uh, t t so to have loads of work in it, I basically had to have it all, have a lot of work in the same room. Um, but. So that so so most of the curating and work was working at trying to work out how to what things to put in the same next to each other. But um, for a while, when I was doing exhibitions, for a while, like uh, when I was first doing exhibitions, like around the, when I did the balloons, for example, I had a rule with myself that I would only exhibit one work at a time because I, f because, um, I could, be because I felt like, <coughs> I felt like if, um, that, um, that, I felt like you can't, you couldn't, you can't, t you can't tell about anything if it's, um, I, like, I feel like often when I go and see exhibitions where there's lots of work, um, like a solo show, uh, often then the, you kind of, the relationships are like between the work, you know, like, oh yeah, it's the red and that one's green, but that one's red, but that one's green, but that one's red, you know. Instead of just going in and seeing like a red thing, and then it's like, oh yeah, it's me and the red thing. You know, instead of this red thing and the green, it's like a, you know, like it's a, like a, like sometimes when a ba if a band are like kind of like playing across the stage to each other, you know, <laughs> like um, not playing out to the audience. Or so sometimes I feel like that when I go to see exhibitions, and I feel like so I had this, I had this kind of rule. I'd only try and show one work, and the, the work had to be able to survive on its own, you know. Um, but um, but I haven't really been like the the, ha the Hayward show just uh, basically it had to have loads of work in it and um, I mean I wanted to show lots of things but also the Hayward wanted to show lots of work. Museums like that have an idea, do, like most museums have an idea that if you don't have enough work, that, you know, that people don't get their money's worth, you know. <clears throat> like, you know, they get a lot of complaints, you know. <laughs> How do you personally come up with an idea like doing the process or is it? Um, I don't really know. I don't. I make a lot of notes. I don't. I make a lot of notes in a notebook. You know, a lot. So, like I, I think I write. Like a lot of work start out with with words, like noted down. Like oh, you know, like make like, you know, make a painting with a. I, I just was like make a painting with. I want. I want to do paintings that have a, like a that have a 
have a have a, a, stro a, a curved swipe like that in. <laughs> you know, I was making a note about it. So the light, so it's like the you know because the movement of your hands. Because I've made a lot of paintings that have straight, that have straight lines, you know, and um, and and. But I'm thinking they shouldn't be like that because when you go like that, you know, it's usually a wee bit curved. You know. So like a note like that, and then trying it, and then you know, but you, you usually I, I feel like you've got to live with something, you know. A long time to to. I feel like I've got uh, often. So like I make notes and I try something out and then you know I get and then often I feel disgusted by it. You know? I just think oh god that's shit you know because like like ideas are really clean you know and words are kind of clean you know often if you put if you put into practice an idea often. In my experience, often when you try something out in reality, it just doesn't, it's just not as good as it, as you thought it was going to be. And it looks to, and it's like, oh fuck, you know, it's all like, oh god, no. <laughs> then, so then I feel like often it's a matter of, then of trying to, well, lately I've been thinking that working is more, is very much a matter of like trying to accept. Um, like to accept the way it is, you know, to sort to accept to the way that you are. Part, partly, I think, you know, I think that working is like trying to come to terms with what comes out of you, basically, you know. And if you try and clean it up, that would usually m make it worse. I think, you know, as opposed to like. Uh, but, but, yeah, but so, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> so what's your studio like when you work with well, loads, of, loads of paintings in a box of blue tack? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really, I don't really have a studio. I mean, I have a kind of office. I, I do, I, I would call it an office. Is it but, just you? Uh, I have people helping me, but I don't. But lately, I've been trying not to have so many people helping me. I don't. I had I, for a few years. I've had people working for me, but I don't really like having people work for me because I always think, oh, why do you want to work? For me? Why do you want to have a job? You know? I don't want to have a job. So why do you want to have a job? <laughs> that, you know, that makes it difficult to... I don't like being a boss, you know. I hate that. I don't like... Uh, I don't really want to be a dad. No. <laughs> so what do you do in your office? Well, I don't go to my office. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, I hate going to the office. <laughs> no, I stay at <laughs> But I do have an office. <laughs> it's in Brick Lane. Uh, actually, I go, I go, well, I, so I work at home. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've got, I, I think I, I feel like I've got to live with my work, you know. Because I don't know. And so, like for me, like trying to work would include, like, I mean, the ideal studio to me would ha would have a bed in it and a, a kitchen and a you know, living room <laughs> and you know and a bathroom. You know, so I may as well have a just work at home. <laughs> um, uh, so I I So when you work at home, do you try and make some paintings in other bits of the room or the parts of the house where you're painting? Well so, so I it's so on a, in a sort of day to day way I work at home and I some I go for, usually for one day or, or two a week to the office and 
have it, and that's when and someone comes like a bookkeeper to help with like kind of stuff like that and then um, still want to break the law so I have to do accounts and all that you know like, but um, uh, I'd, so I'd, I'd just basically then like I'm mean, so unless there's a specific project, because sometimes there's a specific like project. Like, so if um, I'm working on a big show and then and I've and I've and, I've, and, I've, and I want to like tr try and do like twenty paintings of this kind or another, you know, or something like that, then then I'll do like three days in somewhere in either in the office or in the gallery or some you know in some ha space or other to like that, or recording music for three days or something, you know. But but apart from that, I'm just on a day-to-day -day basis. I just basically work at home and I do paintings at home sometimes. And, and that, and, and um, but, but that's kind of weird. Like, so, so sometimes I, 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 like I, I stay in my flat and just try to work, you know, for three days or whatever. And without, and don't answer the phone or anything. But that would typically involve, you know, quite a lot of, you know, watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not necessarily just um, working. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I have to fight against it. I, I do, I like watching TV, but... Um, don't really. What do you watch? I like. Well, I was, last night I was watching Waterloo Road. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, uh, but not, and not just because I'm Scottish. <laughs> but it always makes me laugh that program because it's so so Scottish. But they don't say where it is, unless I'm mistaken. Um, but I, my favourite programme recently was House of Fools. I don't know if you've ever seen that. House of Fools. What? What's the premise of it? It's these, it's Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer, do you know? Uh, it's on BBC yeah. Two. And they're in this house, and there's a son. There's this son, this this Swedish son. He's got a Swedish son. <laughs> he comes. He occasionally comes down stairs and says something really horrible to his dad, and then he goes upstairs again. That, that's the bit I like. Anticipate the success of like when you made lights on, lights off, No, I didn't think. But I, I wouldn't know how to gauge if something was successful. But um, but I just try and make some things so that I'm you know I can live with them you know. And it, but. Well, most of all, I want to make things that I find you know, exciting or funny or or or, or um, I probably the best word is exciting. You know, some something that I like want to you know look at or listen to. You know. So you enjoy it. You like turning the lights on and off for a long time. Doesn't I, get annoying. What? Why didn't I actually turn the lights on? I had a... <laughs> but I think, but I, when I was a kid, I used to love switching the lights on and off. Yeah. You know, especially when someone <laughs> who was in the room to annoy them. <laughs> and then, now, 
and I think that's probably why I did that work. Probably. If that was something that you could do, how do you deal with the criticism? Like if you loved it, and there was a lot of criticism. If I loved that work? Yeah, how did you deal with that criticism? Um, what criticism? <laughs> I, because I don't know, but I either I'm I I I know there's some scandalous type of criticism of it, but I never thought it was that much. It was as much as as um, it's like people say it was. <laughs> so I don't know if I was um, stupid or in a bubble. But, but, but um, the, I, I find criticism really difficult. I, in fact, I think I'm trying to avoid the question because I, I, I find it really difficult when people are critical. And uh, so now I've been trying not reading any press for uh, the last six months or something. I don't read press. I don't look myself up on the internet anymore. Just the gallery, the, the gallery did that just to, because they, they, they don't want to get, they're just scared of getting complaints and, you know. But it's fair enough because many people can, get, can be really upset by uh, vomiting. Yeah. <clears throat> what about that did you find exciting? The vomiting? Yeah. Uh, well, I get in. That actually, that came from from talking. In fact, that, um, I found that so exciting uh, be, because uh, I was I'm really scared of it. I'm really scared of sick, and I've always hated it. Uh, but <clears throat> I I made that work. For, actually, uh, came from. Doing a talk and thinking and talk, trying to talk about making work and thinking that making works like trying to get from the inside out and try and put something outside of you that you know that was on the inside and if it or it, or it, or it, or if you make something that kind of rhymes with you. Um, but I was thinking that it's yeah, it's like getting from the inside out, and so I thought, oh yeah, well, so works like vomiting, you know. And the more direct it is, the better. Thinking about like trying not to think too much about it and trying not to control it. And the more maybe the more out of control it is, the more pure an expression it is, you know. So vomiting is quite a good um, uh, uh, analogy, you know. So, so I was so I was I was talking about that, and I was and then I was thinking that I could just try and film. I thought, why should I should why not try and film people vomiting? If I think it's that um, important, <laughs> and, then, and then I thought, so so I did, and then, and that's how it came about. But I, did, I filmed the people vomiting without really knowing. I didn't know what like, I didn't know what the outcome would be of. I didn't know what kind of work or whatever. Like, He? Sorry? Oh, yeah. So, do you not think that, like, it was very forced? I, I, well, yeah, I mean, they, they had, they, they did have to 
to, to do it, they did have to kind of try and make themselves sick, but that's usually the way with being sick. I mean, it's like you want to be sick to, 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 because you want to feel better, but it's horrible to be sick. So, you, I mean, I, I, when I, I've, I, um, whenever I've tried to make myself be sick, I don't think I've ever managed to do it. The only times I've been sick is when I was just like um, sick, spontaneous. <laughs> but, but three times in my life I've been sick in my sleep uh, from uh, being, you know, from being drunk <laughs> and waking up. You know, just <laughs> it's horrible to wake up with kind of dried vomit stuck to your. <laughs> But so, and I think, in retrospect, I think that's, that was another, like, reason I made that film was because, it was because I, because I'd had quite a lot of traumas with being sick in my life, so, it's the same with a shit film, really. You know, um, the, uh, I find shitting a really traumatic. <laughs> I think, the, yeah, the waking up to sleep with, after a sleep, shit in the bed is probably worse than vomit. Um. Here's the internet. Oh, yeah, it's, it's already on the internet. You can just, oh, is it? Yeah, just tip straight into the... Here? Yeah. <laughs> is this a search thing or do I have to? Oh, you don't have to do Google and let's oh, yeah. do it, I think. <laughs> 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 it doesn't matter, I'm sure you can. Can you see? Yes. No work number one. Because uh, when I um, when when I started numbering, I start I started numbering them. I decided oh, I, I did basically. I thought I don't like titles, and I thought titles were a bit pretentious. And did, did you ask that? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought titles were a bit pretentious, and so I wanted to not have titles, and I didn't like. It was a lot of untitled when I when I at that time, and, and then and I, I didn't like that either. And so I thought of numbering, which I knew about from doing a lot of classical music, you know, like you know where where composers' works are all numbered in cat with a catalog number, and, and so then I went back and numbered. Back work, back. I went to numbered works I'd previously made, and I didn't want to have a work number one because it felt too, um, you know, important. I just I tried to have a kind of fade in, so I started at three and then five. <laughs> Being yeah, well, like, like, like vomiting, like, it's like, it has a serious point, but also when you, when you sort of talk about it, it has some huge points as well. Is that right? I, well, I think, well, um, I, well, I feel like, um, I mean, I want to ha have uh, fun, you, you know, so, so um, but maybe, you know, but I don't, like, uh, I mean, I like, well, I, the work that I like of not, like, of, of, in things I like in the world, I think often 
make me laugh, you know. Um, but then, but maybe laughing, also laughing is can be a kind of nervous thing, you know. So, what? Um, I remember, and um, once I got one of my front teeth is dead because I got kicked in the teeth <laughs> by, a, <laughs> by a guy in a, it was a drug deal gone wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and he punched me in the face and then um, I fell on the floor and then he kicked me in the teeth and I've got a dead tooth. And the person I was with, who was my partner at the time, um, uh, when it happened, just burst out laughing. And she was laughing for about 10 minutes. And I was all like, blah, I was like, you know, um, concussed. And it's just horrible to think about that. Not the laughing, but the eye. But so, and um, I think, I think so sometimes the vomiting makes me laugh because I, because it makes, it scares, scares me, you know. I don't know, I'd imagine it's because of kind of absurd. It's happened to me once that I burst out laughing at, uh, <laughs> actually, it makes me laugh to think of it, because, uh, <laughs> but it was a friend of mine, we were, we were all, we were in Italy and we were on uh, scooters, <laughs> and she, and she was, um, and she just suddenly, like, she like, because you know how in a scooter, the, um, if you're used to, it can be difficult to get used to it in the acceleration thing. You know, you can, you know how in some bikes you've got a brake, which is like the acceleration. Anyway, so she basically drove her uh, scooter, like basically into a brick wall, and just, and it was like, and I remember looking over and just seeing her, and it was as if she was like trying, <laughs> you know, trying to get through the wall, and, uh, kind of accelerating. <laughs> Uh, and I, I remember laughing, you know, uncontrollably. She's alright. Ah, she's alright. <laughs> but I. <coughs> um. This is a. This is a. A new. This is a. It's quite uh, it's a relatively recent painting, and um, this is an example of some new kinds of paintings I've been doing with, uh, like that are kind of like blind paintings where I do them inside a box. So it's a port. This is a portrait done from life, and uh, the work is inside a box. And so I, I mix up the colours based on the subject, and then and then I and then I, I do the painting. I can't see the painting, and I make a note of what I've done so that I remember. Because often it's done in you know a few sittings. And I make a note like that I've done the hair or whatever, and um, I, I've been doing so. I've been working on quite a lot of work uh, that is done sort of blind like that, because um, I feel like often when you can see something, it's um, <clears throat> you know I feel like when I can see things, I have a tendency to um, uh, sort of con to control them, you know. Well, basically, I think seeing things is a sort of c control, you know, and I feel like that's a problem for uh, working. Um, I mean, to try and make something that uh, is uh, surprising to me, you know. Is your favourite medium to work with like paint, or do you prefer like photography, installation, or? 
ก็ตุ้นตุ้นรู้ว่าเสียงอะไรอะไร working in lots of different I definitely like working in lots of different ways because I just get sick of I get I I like I I don't want to get I don't want to do just one thing I don't believe in it you know so that's why I do the music as well because um well well also because I I feel like you cannot separate sound and vision so. I must work on the music. Is I must work on what I see and what I hear. You know, so. Do you make work that you don't want? Aye, I think I do. Aye, aye. What? When when does a piece of work get to the stage where you can number it? Well, it, it gets numbered when it goes officially. Out, <laughs> like when it goes to the gallery or. Okay, so it doesn't get numbered in the studio. It's just it, part of your archive. It sometimes it does. I no, no, yeah. Sometimes it does. I get numbered in the studio, but there's lots of things that aren't numbered as well. Aye. <laughs> it's not that organised. Um, Traditional? Yeah. I, I suppose it was really. I mean, I grew up like getting into art school, doing still lives and all that. When I when I when I got to art school, I, I thought that. That I was making all this work that was, um, well, I didn't, I felt ill at ease, make, I was doing paintings and, and, and stuff that I thought was alright, but that, um, I think it was like things that I liked, so I was doing paintings, like I liked, you know, Miro. <coughs> Suzanne, and then, and I and I think and I did these kind of abstract paintings that were kind of like Miro, and, you know, and then and then and the colours in them I felt were like colours that I chose because well I didn't I felt like I I I, I did. Like it, it seemed to me that it, it, it was uh, uh, um, uh, I just didn't really know what I was doing, you know. So I tried. So I stopped painting and try, tried to think about it. No, I thought I, was, I remember thinking, oh yeah, the only. So I'm doing these paintings, you know, that are because I like art, you know, <coughs> and and the reason I'm doing paintings is because I'm in a painting department at art school, you know, and um, so I thought, okay, I should try not, I should just um, try to make. I thought I shouldn't. Who cares about paintings? Would why not just try and make a thing, you know, to look at. So that's what I did. I, so I, I thought, okay, I'm not going to make a painting. I'm going to just make a thing to look at. And uh, so then, so then I thought, okay, so how, so how can I go about that? How, uh, what could I make? And where would it go? You know, I was thinking, uh, maybe that if I could work out where it's going to go, maybe that'd help me to work out what to make. You know. Instead of just automatically stretching up canvases or whatever, which I had been previously doing, you know, and then <clears throat> so I thought, all right. So I tried to kind of analyse the situation. I thought, all right, I'm, I'm I'm trying to make something to look at. So if it if it if if it if it was on if it if the thing I make is on the wall, then that would be 
good because because if you, if something's on the wall, you can um, it's easy to see because people's eyes face out their heads like that. But you know, so I thought so. So then I thought, okay, so I'm going to try and make something for the wall. And, uh, and then I thought, yeah, but I can't, I don't, I can't, I can't, I don't want to use canvas because that's just like using, that's just like doing a convention, like, because, you know, so then I thought of trying to make the wall, like build the wall out. And that's what led to the, the uh, these, um, uh, that's how come I made uh, that. Ah, shit. There. I am. Yeah, this same. Um, That led to doing this. That's how that, that's how this came about. From like thinking I'm going to make something for the wall, but I don't know what to make. So I thought I'd try and use the wall itself. And um, and I mean, in a, in a way, I didn't really like I, I, the first thing I thought of doing was just having the wall kind of come straight down. You know, like straight down. But then I thought, well, no, but you know, no one, you know, you wouldn't know that anything was there if the wall just came straight down, because the, the wall you know, already comes straight down. You know, so then I thought, well, maybe to show that something's been done, I, I need to come out from the wall, you know, you know, a diff, you know, at a different angle, and uh, and that. So then I built this curve coming out from the wall. Uh, and this this work is cur uh, is the same curve that comes out and goes round and goes back. So it's a big blob, kind of protrusion from the wall, and um, and the way that I decided on the size of the work was by because uh, I thought since it was made of the wall material, it ought to be painted over using a roller so that it's got the same texture as the wall. And so I made sure that the curve was bigger than a roller diameter, so that when you paint over it, you, know, you can get into the uh, into the curve. And that, that so that decided the size of it, and, uh, and that and, and that so that was a kind of process that, that led to that. The height on the wall is just uh, decided by according to taste. How high is it? Uh, well, I like uh, things hung at um, one three nine centimeters <laughs> because, uh, and that is that's uh, a height. I, I hate it when things are hung too high. So all the works in the Hayward Show are hung at one three nine. Uh, to the middle of the work, whether they're big or small, unless there's a reason, another, a different reason why they were. But the but the the decision of height of the height of a work is something that that like I consider that kind of flaw in the work in a way, you know, that like a, the, a flaw that's solved by a work like the balloons, which just fill the room and take on the shape of the people. In a way, it's like trying to solve the question that you're, you know, you're asking. You know. uh, Where did you start playing music? Uh, when I when I was I grew up like being basically like getting into music and art at the same time. I kind of get taught that music and art were both like the top things that you could do. <laughs> my, my mom and dad were like into like as laudable things to do, you know. <laughs> and, then, um, what was the process between the uh, 
the blue tack idea. In the A-Web region. The what? The blue tack on the wall. The process. Yeah, that, we had a process for that. <coughs> well, that, 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 the blue tack came from um, <coughs> after this thing that. Uh, <coughs> So this work is like a seamlessly part of the wall, you know, and um, after this I got on to thinking of trying to make something separate from the wall, but what but is on the wall, and uh, so I was, I got into um, investigating adhesive materials, <laughs> and uh, Including masking. That's when I made these work a lot of work. I made a lot of work out of masking tape, and uh, and uh, and then and the blue tack. It was uh, is sticky. What? Oh yeah. The work with the dogs. Um, the work. Uh, wait, just a second. I'm addicted to wet wipes. So just excuse me a second. Um, so I feel cleaner, cleaner. If I wipe my hands. Uh, the, the, I get into the dogs because um, I get into the dogs. Oh yeah, I was trying to make this piano work. I was trying to make it was when I was when I you know the piano the slamming piano. Um, <coughs> I, I, I was I, I, I was trying to buy a piano, and there was a guy who was selling the piano, and we went, I went with a gallery to his house and he had this piano but he also had these dogs these two dogs a big dog and a small dog and they lived there and I and um, and I just remember thinking wow that's amazing you know it's like the biggest dog in the world and the smallest dog you know it's like a ready-made sculpture you know it covers everything from big to small and um, so I asked him if we could do, you know, make a film of his dogs. And that, that's, that was it, basically. So he had these dogs and they, they, they were living together. And, uh, and I just thought it was like a ready-made sculpture. And I had an exhibition where his, his dogs were kind of like living at the gallery. So if you went to the exhibition, uh, the dogs were there and some other paintings and stuff. Mm. So that was it more or less happened by accident. Do you think you're a bad influence, Martin? What? <laughs> Do I think what? That you're a bad influence. No, why? Do you? Oh, I see a certain philosophy. I also kind of thinking that um, you know, uh, there's a certain amount of um, uh, uh, blatant jealousy going on. I mean, yeah. I'm imagining the next trip. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, Martin said it's okay. <laughs> no, but I don't. What do you mean? Uh, so, how did you make the decision? I wanted to stick it to the wall. It was sticky. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real reason. Hi. <laughs> 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 <Aye. laughs> What? The cheese is like it. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, well I, I don't know, but I got on, I had tutors that I, that I liked and that um, help, were very helpful to me. I think I was lacking in a lot of confidence and they definitely helped me, you know, to, art, 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 I liked art school. 
mine. Because I feel like that's the thing, you know, the thing to do is to try to do what you, um, you know, what, what you um, want to do. Although I think it's a problem to know what you want to do. But, um, but whatever you're doing, try and do it you know, more, you know, pretty much. And they, and, um, I, um, I remember being really scared of doing things because I thought, because, every, because just about anything that I thought of doing, you know, you know, I thought, oh, but that's too similar to, uh, you know, something someone else has done, you know. I'll just turn that off. Yeah, I feel like it can be very inhibiting, you know, talking to people about your work, I think, can be very inhibiting, you know, if they express an opinion about it, anything, you know, often when I'm working on things, and if I ask someone what they think, you know, if you ask someone what they think, or if it's their job to tell you what they think, which is in case if with a, with a tutor, you know, then almost anything they say, depending on how you're disposed, you know, will, you know, affect you, and, um, I mean, it might encourage you, but um, it might start inhibit you as well, you know. I'm quite cagey about that, quite often, you know, because almost like, because if, 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 if I show someone a painting and they say, oh yeah, that's great, you know, why don't you make a red one, you know? And I think, oh, fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, if I make a red one now, he'll fucking think it's his idea. <laughs> you know? And then, you know, and I get all caught up in, you know, in a, you know, a trap about that, you know, so, but, but, but I think that the tut my tutors, you know, um, definitely, well, I, I felt that it was help helpful, you know. So what would be your advice for a lot of us just about leaving art school and you want to make art? Would be my advice yeah. uh, to um, don't trust yourself <laughs> and uh, and do what you're scared of. Is that what you did? Uh, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of advice. <laughs> 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 but I think that, you know, to do the exact opposite of what you think you want to do could be a good thing to do. Um, I, f I feel like often in my life, you know, the thing um, when I really didn't want to do something uh, and I really forced myself to do it, you know, uh, seems like quite often that those are things that I would be really glad I did. <laughs> but oh, fuck. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't I can't switch it off because I wiped it with a wet wipe and so it's <laughs> I always do that, it happens all the time. I go through so many phones. Uh, I but I feel like, you know, but I'm not kind of advocating, you know, masochism. But it seems to me like often it's quite hard to do, like, like so, it, it, like if you stay, if you try, because I feel like everyone's got a tendency to take the route of least resistance in any given situation, you know. I feel like that's what I do. And I feel like I've got to really fight against doing that because I think the root of least resistance is going to end up with you, like in my case, me like basically sitting on the sofa and you know, watching TV and eating biscuits, you know, and then um, in, in that, and although I like doing that, I'd, you know, it's not, you know, it's not as exciting as, but it's also not as hard as, you know, doing, you know, meeting a curator for that show. You know, which is a real hassle, but 
um, you know, it's it's exciting to do, you know, basically like they're sitting on the sofa and then there's like you know jumping off the cliff into the water, you know, and then and then you've just got to start swimming, you know, and so I feel like working work like I think I feel like working is often a matter of like, you know, finding a cliff to jump off, you know, and uh, and jumping off it, you know, and that. It's as scary as fuck, you know. But um, if you stay on, the, you know, a bit on the sofa, one foot on the cliff, <laughs> you, know, you know. But then, but like I say, I feel like I've had to. I feel like plenty of times I have to like really force myself to do things, you know, like like dragging, like, like it's, you know, like like doing it, like like kind of like making yourself go to some job you don't want to do, you know. But um, but like I say, I, it's kind of that's weird because I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't sort of advocate, you know, um, doing things that are, you know, bad for you or something like that, you know. But I don't feel like I can tell the difference a lot of time though, you know. So it's a matter of like trying things out and. Um, but I feel like I've definitely got to sort of fight against a tendency to. Um, well, also, because like jumping off the cliff, you know, you're kind of basically out of control, you know, and so I think that's probably the most scary thing about it. Um, what are you going to play for us? What? What are you going to play for us? Sorry? What are you going to play for us? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I just thought I could play another one. I, um, I didn't decide. All right, this is this is called Mind Trap. I got myself into a mind trap. Yeah. 
thinking that song and it's about uh, uh, well uh, there's two chords and that was uh, that was the wrong one <laughs> and there's two chords and there's one chord for thinking and one for not thinking Have a nice uh, <laughs> hope you have a nice uh, day. <laughs> 